Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Youth Nicotine Trends Lunch and Learn. Um, I am Sam Jennerjohn, a mentoring coordinator in Delaware County, and I am excited to share some um, trends going on and some of the new products that are out. All right, just some light housekeeping. Um, please make sure you've signed in in the chat box, at least your name. If you put your email, remember that that's an opportunity for us to send you the upcoming training flyer so that you don't miss out on something. Um, like I said, this is being recorded. You're welcome to use your video if you choose, but please make sure you have yourself muted so that there's no other distractions. Um, also, after the presentation, you'll be sent the recording and PowerPoint if your email is in that chat. Um, just a little bit about mentoring before we go ahead and dive in on the topic. Um, youth mentoring strives to navigate youth away from risky behavior. Um, having that trusted adult in your life um, is used as a prevention skill to help um, educate kiddos and our youth on some of the topics that we do trainings on to make sure they have the right resources and that the youth has somebody to openly discuss these topics without judgment. Um, if you are wanting to find out more, you can go to Helping Services or reach out to myself, Kathy or Colleen, and we will be happy to get you more information. All right, and we do have a guest speaker today and I'm gonna let her introduce herself. Ashley Haven Straight and I serve under a tobacco prevention and control grant that serves um, six counties here in Northeast Iowa with Delaware County being one of them. Thank you, Ashley. Um, she is gonna present some of the slides today and be here as an expertise to answer any questions. Some of you may have that I won't be able to answer. Um, just a quick, why are we here? Um, between caring for our youth, um, learning more about the e-cigarettes and the nicotine products. We also are going to gain some more knowledge on resources that are going to be available. Um, before we go ahead and get started, you can either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. What is it that you guys already know about vaping, vaping products, or any resources that are out there? Like I said, you can throw it in the chat if you're more comfortable. Otherwise, you can unmute yourself. Well, I actually know very little. Um... I read this CDC stuff, which is the first time I've learned some something about it. Um, so I need more information, um, particularly about that vitamin E acetate. Uh, that that um, is very much is interesting to me, and how we know whether what products it's in. Awesome. We hope to answer those questions and educate you more today. See, check the chat and see. Some of you know about the vaping products and tools, um, that they're easily hidden by users. Some don't know much, which is great. I'm glad you're here. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right. We're just going to dive right in here um, this afternoon. And um, this is the latest Iowa Youth Survey, and this is youth who reported ever using e-cigarettes. Um, as you can see in the blue is the sixth graders, and in the red is the 11th graders. Um, and it shows the counties down there and the percentage of them who have. Um, the Iowa Youth Survey only goes to sixth grade, so it's not getting any of those younger ages, um, which could be um, having their first time using. Um, according to the Iowa Youth Survey, of the eighth graders that use these products, among around 39 to 45% used them first at age 11 or 12, so that's even younger than sixth grade. And then we are going to do a little vaping 101, kind of get what they look like. Is it really just water vapor? And it's like a five-minute crash course we're going to go through. 
This is an ad for one of today's hottest products. If you don't look carefully though, you might miss what it's advertising. It's this little thing, and it's called Jewel. Jewel looks more like a flash drive or computer device, but it is really another kind of e-cigarette. Since it launched in 2015, Jewel has taken over about 70% of the e-cigarette retail market share. It's now worth about $16 billion, and that success is often attributed to its sleek design. But the same features that make Juul a well-engineered product also make it attractive to young people, many of whom have never smoked before. And that has people worried, because devices like Juul might be designed to help smokers get off cigarettes, but they're also addicting a new generation to nicotine. So what makes this one e-cigarette so different from the rest? Answering that question starts with what you see on the outside. Juul is an e-cigarette, but it really doesn't look like one. It looks like a tech product, and it's tiny. That allows smokers to get a nicotine fix without having to worry about social stigma, but also allows young users to consume nicotine inconspicuously without having to worry about who sees them. Going to school, having this in your pocket is a lot better than having like, like something this big that looks kind of like a lightsaber. You know, you could kind of jewel anywhere in discreetness. That discreetness is a big shift for e-cigarettes. Since the first patent in 1930, designs haven't been very subtle. The first generation of e-cigarettes mimicked the shape, size, and colors of traditional cigarettes, sometimes even with a fake light-up tip. The second and third generations focused on larger and more customizable devices with longer battery life and big plumes of vapor. Then came the Juul, a stripped-down version with no buttons, no big plumes of vapor, and no complex refilling or recharging. And it comes in a variety of bright colors that set it apart from other e-cigarettes, which made it look like a tech product that young people were already familiar with. That is why people call Juul the iPhone of e-cigs. And that similarity makes sense. Juul's founders met at Stanford Design School, and one worked as a design engineer at Apple. They created the first e-cigarette that looked more like a cool gadget and less like a drug delivery device. This wasn't smoking or vaping. It was Juuling. Yeah, like how grandmas have iPhones now, it's kind of like normal kids have Juuls now. Because it looks so modern, we kind of trust modern stuff a little bit more, so we're like, we can use it. We're not going to have any trouble with it because you can trust it. The tech um, aspect definitely helps people get introduced to it. And then once uh, once they're introduced to it, they're staying because they're conditioned to like all these different products. And then this is another product and it's just another product until you're addicted to nicotine. And that is where it gets tricky. A 2017 study found that 25% of 15 to 24 year olds recognized the jewel in a photo, but the majority of them didn't know that it always contains nicotine. It's easy to trace that information gap. You just have to look at the ads. When you look at Jewel's marketing today, you find video testimonials from adult ex-smokers. My name is Lauren. My name is Brandon. My name is Carolyn. My name is Aman. I'm 38. But when Jewel first launched, their marketing looked a lot different. When you put those ads alongside old cigarette ads, the similarities are pretty striking. Both marketed relaxation, sharing, travel, freedom, and sex appeal. It's now illegal for cigarette brands to use these kinds of suggestive advertising themes. But for e-cigarette manufacturers who had products on the market before 2016, those strategies are still unregulated. That's why a brand like Candy Pens can be promoted in DJ Khaled music videos, just like tobacco corporations used to pay stars to smoke their cigarettes on screen. But compared to cigarettes, jewels are a lot easier to start using. Typical e-cigarettes have between 6 and 30 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter of vape liquid. One Juul pod packs in 59 milligrams. That's three times the nicotine levels permitted in the European Union, which is why Juul isn't sold there. But here in the US, e-cigarettes don't have the same restrictions, even though we know that nicotine dependency can prime developing brains for future substance abuse disorders. The company says that Juul's nicotine content is about as much as a pack of cigarettes, though tobacco experts say it's likely more than that. And Juuls have a patented system for delivering that nicotine. Most e-cigarettes use a potent version of nicotine called Freebase that gives users a strong hit. But Juuls vaporize a liquid made from nicotine salts. Those salts allow nicotine to be absorbed into the body at about the same speed as regular cigarettes, much faster than most e-cigarettes. But unlike Freebase nicotine, which can be irritating, nicotine salt goes down smoothly. So Juul packs a bigger nicotine dose into a much more pleasant hit than most devices on the market. And that has public health officials worried, because the US almost beat nicotine addiction among kids. As cigarette smoking among those under 18 has fallen, 
the use of other nicotine products, and especially e-cigarettes, has taken a drastic leap. In April, the FDA demanded that Juul submit documents on its marketing and research. A group of senators sent a letter asking Juul to stop using flavors and designs that appeal to children. And there are now three lawsuits alleging that Juul contains too much nicotine. In response to the concerns, the makers of Juul have pledged $30 million to combat underage use. Merchandise and marketing materials now have big warning labels on them, and the company is developing lower nicotine pods. The trouble is, there's still a lot we don't know about the long-term health impacts of e-cigarettes. Juul, like other e-cigarettes, might have set out to design a solution to a public health problem. But in a lot of ways, their product has created a new one. That was a lot of information given to you guys all kind of at once, but um, no need to worry because we are going to go more in depth with some of this. So that video mainly talked about Juul. Um, this is just going to give you kind of a dive in deeper on some of the different looks. Um, Juul is just one brand and one look. Um, so there are different kinds of vapes, there's rechargeable versus disposable. disposable. Um, the main difference between that is obviously um, once the e-liquid for the disposable e-cigarette is used, that product is thrown away. So you would dispose of it after all the liquid is used up. Um, there's not a way to add more flavor or e-juice to that one, but a rechargeable one that could look like a USB stick, um, those come with pods or cartridges that you can replace. So the product then gets charged and you replace that pod or cartridge. Um, so there's a couple different um, devices on there that also you can put juices into. There's a spot that you can buy juice and then open and put the liquid into. So there's really three different kinds of vapes. Um, going in a little bit more, there's the open or the closed, um, an open system. Like I said, the user is able to add the e-liquid to the tank or the pin, um, in the closed system, those come bought, they're prepackaged, um, such as the jewel, which was in the video we just watched. Um, if you're looking at the screen, the first three examples in the slide are going to be disposable e-cigarettes, um, they appear like filtered cigarettes in both shape and coloring. Um, if you look at the one in the middle that has the big black box, that is um, an open one where you can put juices into and that has a bigger battery. Um, some new research shows greater dependence on e-cigarettes among users due to pod based evidence such as jewel e-cigarettes emitting nicotine at greater rates. Juul also claims compared to other e-cigarettes, its product delivers nicotine to the blood 2.7 times faster. So some more newer um, technology with these vapes is these accessories um, that are easier to hide. So as you can see, one looks like a watch, a Sharpie. There's the sweatshirt with um, the vape at the end of the hoodie. Um, there is one that looks like an inhaler and then the newest one that I don't have pictured, but looks pretty similar to the Sharpie. Um, Ashley let us know that there's one that looks like a highlighter and you're able to even use it as a highlighter. So every day or every week there's continuously changing, um, and new products coming out. Um, so just a little bit about nicotine itself. Um, it's a drug found in um, tobacco plants and is highly addictive. Um, the vaping products contain various amounts of nicotine and these are damaging, the nicotine is damaging to the brain. Um, the youth who use e-cigarettes are more likely to become dual users and so educating yourself and the youth on the nicotine, what's in the products that they're using is key so that we can help with prevention. 
So like in the video said, there was the two types of nicotine. Um, just a little bit more information on that. The free base nicotine, um, like a regular cigarette, is very harsh on the throat. So when you're breathing it in, you have that burning sensation. Um, with Juul and some of these other vaping products, um, they were allowed or they have less harsh allowing users to take a deeper bigger breath, more frequent hits, and causing them more nicotine to be absorbed into the brain at faster rates. Um, and that harshness, around that harshness, they added um, benzoic acid to the nicotine, and that's what's the nicotine salts. Um, so it's making all these users, it's just more... Um, frequently used and absorbed into the brain at higher rates. And before I dive into vapor versus aerosol, um, I'm gonna take a quick moment since that's a lot of information from that video and kind of elaborating more. If anyone at this time has any questions that they've put in the chat or want to unmute themselves and ask, they are more than like more than welcome to do so and we can get those questions answered. If not, then there will be other times for questions or comments that Ashley or myself are able to answer. Um, going into vapor versus aerosol, um, product producing an aerosol, not water vapor. So what does that mean? Um, they are commonly called vapor. The tobacco companies introduced the word water vapor with e-cigarettes for two reasons. It makes it sound healthy, safe, less harmful. And two, because um, it would not identify with smoking. So they're really putting these words out there to make their product seem like it's gonna be a healthier alternative than smoking cigarettes. But remembering that this is not just water vapor, um, there's the nicotine, there's um, flavoring chemicals, cancer-causing chemicals, heavy metals, lead, tin, and nickel, and many other things that is inside of this. Um, I know the video talked about Sam, the one. Yeah. There is a question that came through in the chat. Do you want to take it now or you want me to just hold it for later? Um, give me two more slides and then we're about to transfer over to Ashley and we'll give another break in there. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, just talking about a little bit more, um, vaping products aren't fully regulated, leaving nicotine levels, um, to vastly differ. As you can see from the picture, um, it shows one pack of cigarettes and the amount of nicotine, the one jewel pod, the amount of nicotine, one puff bar, and so on. Um, quitting these highly addictive products can be extremely hard. Nicotine dependence can happen quickly and changes the brain, makes quitting more complex just by using willpower alone. Um, some studies show that three out of 100 people who are quitting will be suc successful using the quitting cold turkey method. I know that a lot of people think that quitting cold turkey um, is easy, it's really hard, and that's why um, at the end of this, we'll have some resources that if you or someone you know or a youth you know is thinking about quitting, um, we do have some great resources to point you guys in the right direction. Okay, um, we are going to do a myth or fact. If you know how to work Zoom, there is a little annotate button where you're allowed to have a stamp. If you do not know how to work that, um, you can just put in the chat if you think it's myth or fact. But otherwise, there's a stamp and you're able to put your, um, like if you chose a star like that. Um, so myth or fact, the tobacco and vaping industries target young people by sweet flavors, cheap prices, and easy access. You can go ahead and use a stamp or put it in the chat. We're getting a bunch of fact in the chat. Perfect. And we have a couple people that use the stamp that also put fact. Um, 
So the tobacco industry has a history of targeting groups of people, especially youth, to make them new customers. This is nothing new. Vaping industries are using the same tactics with these new products because they're sweet, cheap, and easy to get. Oh, I'm still on my stamp. There we go. All right. And um, this slide just shows that more than 2.5 million high and middle school students currently use e-cigarettes. Um, the tobacco and vaping industry spend millions of dollars targeting youth. Last year in Iowa alone, tobacco companies spent over $92 million in marketing. Worldwide, they spend $1 million per hour marketing their products. This is just another slide on advertising. Um, the industries use low prices, coupons, sales, or specials to make their products cheap. Um, most recently, the Views brand launched a new device called the Alto. Um, this device is really cheap, costing only 99 cents. That comes with the battery and the charger. And then you have to purchase the pods separately. And they come in two different strengths of nicotine. You can buy 5% or 2.4%. And they come in a two-pack or a four-pack. Um, so making these cheap, and easy. We often hear youth are sharing these devices and pods and e-juices to cut down on cost. So they're purchasing a 99 cent device and splitting the two or four pack to save on money. Also, um, they are targeting youth with their flavors. These are just some flavors, um, but as you can see, there's 8,000 flavors and they appeal to youth um, also making it seem like it's harmless going into your body because it's the flavor of apple juice or um, whipped cream. And so this is really targeting the youth with um, selling their juices for those e-cigarettes and pods. And this is a time to stop for questions. Um, Colleen, we can ask that question you had in the chat. Yeah, so we had someone ask, how can we or, or they tell if our youth, our kids are doing this? Okay, so we will touch base on this a little bit later in um, the slides, but one of the ways that you could um, tell if youth are vaping is that some of those vapes have that sweet scent um, it's really strong smelling. And um, another way is if they're being discreet about some of the items that they have, if they have um, a vape hiding in their pencil case or in their car, or um, also to just kind of watch their behavior for those like withdrawal symptoms if they are at home and not able to have that nicotine at that moment. Um, Ashley, do you have anything else to add to that at this moment? Nope, that's everything that I would have covered. Okay. So, um, like I said, we will touch base a little bit more. There's a slide later in the presentation that talks about, um, you know, talking to youth and what to look out for if we didn't get your question answered now. And I'm going to turn this over to Ashley. Awesome. Well, um, I do want to just touch base on the first um, question that came out at the beginning of the presentation. I apologize as I didn't write down the name of the person that said it, but um, somebody brought up wanting to know more information about the vitamin E acetate. Um, we uh, won't be discussing it much um, later on in the presentation, essentially, because um, there's not a lot of uh, new information surrounding the Evoli cases. So when I say Evoli, I'm talking about, it stands for e-cig or vaping associated lung injury. So if we reflect back on when um, youth and young adults were being hospitalized for vaping use and um, even some of them dying from vaping use, it was essentially linked to a chemical called vitamin E acetate. 
Um, the vitamin E acetate was found in a majority of the marijuana vapes with um, some nicotine vapes as well. Um, they, they essentially quit monitoring Evoli when um, COVID hit in 2020, um, but we haven't heard um, much updates since. So um, it must not be a big issue as of um, now. It just goes to speak that vitamin E acetate can be used in other products and can um, not necessarily have any negative um, repercussions linked to it. But when we change the chemistry and we put it deep into our lungs, um, it can cause um, a lot of issues, obviously. Um, so I hope I answered um, the question to um, what uh, the person was um, wondering about the vitamin E acetate. If not, um, feel free to speak up. Otherwise, we'll transition on. All right, so we're going to switch over to some of the newer tactics um, that's being done by the e-cigarette um, companies. So before we get into that, I just wanted to break down some of the sources of nicotine. So we all know that um, the most economical source of nicotine is from the tobacco plant, number one, because the tobacco plant um, reproduces um, large amounts of nicotine and um, very potent. So there are other sources that um, produce nicotine as well, which I kind of found interesting. Um, so the other source would be from nightshade plants. And so some of the nightshade plants would be like tomatoes and peppers, which I had no idea that that was even possible until like last year. Um, but the reason why companies never pulled from those plants is simply because um, going back to the um, and economical portion, um, there's not a lot being produced in those plants. And so it would never be um, feasible to pull um, the nicotine from those plants. Um, and then the third is through a lab, um, which apparently we've been able to make nicotine in a lab for over a hundred years, but once again, it never made sense to make it in the lab because it just costs more. And so it was much easier to um, pull from the tobacco plant. So with it being made in a lab, or I should back up a little bit, um, we know that nicotine in and of itself can cause um, issues to the body. So we know that it um, has a negative impact on our cardiovascular system, um, and can uh, make our hearts have to work a lot harder to get the same effect. We also know that it can um, negatively impact our um, lungs as well. And so with it being made in a lab, the companies were essentially coming out and saying, hey, our um, nicotine's healthy. Um, it's not the bad nicotine that we can pull from those other plants. Um, at this point in time, we have no evidence to, to suggest that what they're saying is true. Um, and honestly, I always like people to reflect that um, when they're making those claims, really, what is the purpose of having nicotine in a, a product, right? So we go back to that is the addictive factor um, in the traditional products as well as these newer ones. And so um, really, what's the point? Um, the only um, thing that I, one positive that could come from it, if it is, um, if what they're sharing is accurate, is um, the benefits that it could have on our current adult um, nicotine users. So for that sake, you know, we hope that um, it is safer. However, at this point in time, we have um, no reason to um, think that it is safer. Also, um, nicotine is, it, um, it is addictive. It's technically a poison. So signs of nicotine poisoning can um, be feeling agitated and nauseous. Also, um, nicotine poisoning doesn't typically happen in adults or, um, or teenagers simply because they're more likely to stop using before they receive any negative impacts from it. But it's still important to point out um, because uh, we have seen some of the teenagers encourage their younger siblings to use these um, high potency nicotine products. And so with that being said, um, uh, nicotine poisoning can be very deadly for um, toddlers and babies. Okay, so transitioning over 
to the um, evolution and the regulations and how that all came about. So in 2009, the Tobacco Control Act was passed, which allowed the FDA to regulate tobacco products. And so at that time, those that regulation truly only applied to um, cigarettes, chewing tobacco, um, and cigars. So uh, as a result of the lack of clarity and um, how and if the regulation could apply to e-cigarettes, that is where we've seen um, e-cigarette use increase tenfold from 2011 to 2016. Um, however, in 2016, FDA um, deemed uh, was deemed or given authority to regulate these e-cigarettes. So initially, the FDA gave um, two years for each of the companies to prepare and submit a pre-market tobacco application um, showing how their products should be allowed to remain on the market. And um, during this time, they also allowed, they were going to allow them to continue to sell their products um, while they were preparing that application. So since then, the FDA has extended the deadline until August of 2022, um, while still allowing them to sell. So there was a bunch of public health groups that got together and ended up suing the FDA for the extended de deadline, um, which led to a federal judge ruling that in May of 2020, um, uh, set a ruling of May of 2020 as the deadline for pre-market -mark, um, applications, so demanding those to happen by then. In 2020, the FDA issued a policy that um, prohibited flavors, so that's the partial flavor ban that um, we were talking about earlier in the presentation, so essentially um, no flavors except for tobacco and menthol could be sold and sold in the pods. And so really um, what I'm talking about is little things that can be inserted into the actual device. Um, those were the only ones that were applied to the ban. And so at the time, if you look at it, um, Juul was by far the most popular product. And so um, in their minds, they were um, addressing the products that were the big is issues among our youth. However, the e-cigarette companies, um, obviously evolved. And in order to get around the um, FDA regulation, they essentially created um, completely disposable products. And so that is why we're seeing those um, flavors on the market still to this day. Um, and then uh, with the um, arrival of submitting those applications, um, the e-cigarette companies once again evolved. And then that is when they decided that creating their nicotine in a lab was economical. So even though it wasn't economical before it was, it is now to get around that, um, flavor restriction and also the age restriction that we put on the, um, e-cigarettes as well. So since then, um, so this happened in 2022, um, all that happened where they essentially said, you had no right to regulate me because I'm not a tobacco product. We're, you know, and that's where we're seeing advertisements and we're, we still see them where the products will say tobacco free. And they're just essentially saying that because they're not pulling from the tobacco plant, they'll still contain um, nicotine in them. Um, and then the FDA came back and said that they did have a right to regulate them. However, it's going to take a long time for them to reach out to these companies and um, address all the issues that come that accompany them. Um, to this day, um, the FDA released something in March of 2023 where there's only 23 um e-cigarette products or e-cigarette um, devices. And the only manufacturer labeled was views um, as being allowed to be in, that is lawfully allowed to sell here in the United States. 
Um, so essentially, um, you can make an argument that all the other e-cigarettes are not allowed to be sold. But once again, um, the FDA is um, working their way through um, the applications and addressing all these um, different products. So um, transitioning to are the e-cigarettes safe? So we know um, that nicotine in and of itself can cause harm to the body. Also, we know that um, it can cause issues for any developing brain. So with that being said, the CDC claims that these products are not safe for youth, young adults going back to the brains aren't developed until age 25. Also, we know nicotine can harm the developing fetus's brain. So um, any nicotine use is discouraged um, for any pregnant woman, um, as well as um, some of the other issues um, that accompany these products. So even though we don't have um, a full idea of what the long-term effects are, we still know that these products and the aerosols that um, is created by these products contain um, metals, also um, some of the same cancer causing chemicals that we find in traditional products as well. Um, so even though we don't have a concrete picture of what the long-term effects are, we still know that there's um, potentially harmful um, substances in these products. And also going back to there's chemicals that are safe to eat, but um, once we put them into the lungs, we're really changing the dynamics there. Um, also these products are known to explode while in use, while they're being charged. Also, um, I won't touch um, base too much on this, but uh, the fact that nicotine is indeed a poisoning and can cause harm to little children. We sort of have a question in the chat, Ashley. I don't know if it was really a question or more of a statement, but they said, how on earth were these ever made legal? It would seem the FDA is not our friend. Yeah, um, yeah, there's been, I mean, obviously there was um, public health groups by, that are clearly upset by the way they're choosing to regulate. And um, I guess I've never been in that position. So I personally don't understand why it's taking so long to regulate these, but, um, you know, maybe it just does take that long to, you know, to work your way through the legalities of um, regulating these products. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm confused as to why it's taking so long. And then, it, oh, is this, is this me, Sam? So um, I think so. Well, um, I can do the slide if you want to uh, catch the next slide. Um, so Another question is, can these sub or can these products be used for other um, substances? And the answer is yes. So obviously, um, Sam talked about how the um, things can be added into these products or into some of the open systems. So you can add your own e-liquid, which essentially opens the door to, um, for other substances. But also some of the closed systems, such as like um, pods for Juul and things like that. Um, I know you can go online and um, figure out how to change um, change the systems and essentially put those into um, put anything you want in there. So yeah, it's definitely not limited to nicotine. Okay, and back over to how to know if youth are vaping. I know we um, chatted about this a little bit earlier. Um, just to go back over it again, um, those unexplained sweet scents, those could be um, the flavors if coming off of the vaping, um, they could stick to their clothes, um, the unfamiliar products just to be on the lookout for, um, unusual pins, USB drives, those unfamiliar batteries, they could be bigger or smaller, um, the charging devices to charge their vapes. And then just kind of knowing your the youth you're thinking about or the child um, and watching for some unexplained anxiety, irritability, restlessness, um, depressed moods and frustration and anger. Those could all be withdrawal symptoms. Um, yes, hard to know the difference between um, a teen going through those changes puberty-wise 
But if you know your kiddo, if you know your mentee, if you know um, them and it's out of character, that could be kind of a red flag and something to look for. And now we're gonna get into some resources. Um, we have some really good ones. Um, a few Ashley are gonna talk about, and then um, we will dive into Your Life Iowa a little bit. All these resources um, are great for, like I said earlier, um, for yourself, for a friend, for a child, um, or just to educate yourself more and making sure you are able to be that good um, resource for somebody that could need you. So we have our I-STEP chapters that we work with um, across our service area. So I-STEP stands for Iowa Students for Tobacco Education and Prevention. And so the whole idea behind this is we know that youth are way more likely to listen to their peers. And so um, through this um, leadership opportunity, we like to give um, youth a platform to uh, not only educate their peers, but also educate their um, communities. And we truly leave it up to the kids on what um, they want to do um, through this platform. So um, it can be maybe they just want to focus on um, education at their school. Um, that's fine. Otherwise, there's opportunities for them to join our ISTEP Executive Council, which is composed of like seven to ten um, youth from across the state. And then they get to um, educate. Um, peers from across the state and lead a um, annual summit that um, the ISTEP groups are invited to, uh, which is a really cool opportunity. And so the next slide, I believe we're talking transitioning into cessation. So um, one of the things uh, that we can do as well, if we find that our youth are vaping as if we are a tobacco user, is um, a good example. And I know that's harder said than done, especially um, since quitting tobacco can be very, very hard. Um, but with that being said, I wanted um, people to know that there is a free resource out there called Quitline Iowa. Um, so through the program, they can get access to a quick coach, um, which is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Also, if they're 18 and older, they can, um, their insurance or nobody else will pay for their nicotine replacement therapies, such as gums, patches, and things like that. They can access that through the program for free as well. And then next slide. Um, so our National Jewish Health, which is um, the uh, National Respiratory Clinic that oversees these cessation programs, they um, decided that it was um, in the best interest um, to create a whole separate um, subgroup to their cessation program called the My Life, My Quit. Um, so the My Life, My Quit serves anybody 13 to 17 years old um, and is essentially set up in the same way, except for these coaches are specifically designed to work with the youth. Um, it is, uh, I do have a video to share with you, but we are at 1248. And so, um, it is kind of a lengthy video, um, but it is a very good, um, video. So if you guys have, um, some spare time after this, or maybe later on this week, it is a good video to show you, um, the perspective of a mother here in Iowa whose son um, was caught vaping and had used the My Life by Quit program to quit. Also, um, it does go into a little bit about um, the initiative that we're trying to work on here um, throughout the state of getting the schools to adapt the My Life by Quit as um, as something that they implement anytime they catch a student who's been caught vaping. So there's a little bit of that, but still there's um, good information and uh, perspectives that is shared um, from people at our state. So if you get some time, uh, you check it out. Yeah, and if yeah. we have your email in that chat box, um, like I said at the beginning, this will be sent out so you guys will be able to 
um, watch it and we'll make sure that um, if you need any other resources, we can get those to you as well. Um, Your Life Iowa is um, another resource and that is something that Kathy and myself um, are trying to reach a goal of educating and spreading the word about it to 100 adults. Um, so if you have not heard of Your Life Iowa, it is a 24-7 um, call, text, or chat, and it is um, a resource for substance misuse, mental health. Um, it's kind of the catch-all. So for yourself, if you need resources, um, for um, a peer, this is a great place to go. It has um, education. It has many different um, aspects to it with alcohol and mental health and substance misuse. So I think it's a great um, spot for you to kind of make sure you cover all bases. If you don't know much about it, it could be an opportunity for Kathy or myself to do a presentation and we are able to do those live or Zoom like we're doing today. Um, and you would just have to reach out to uh, myself or her. So evaluation time, um, Colleen is going to throw the link in the chat box. And if you guys could take just a couple minutes and quickly do that evaluation before we finish wrapping up, um, this helps us know uh, if we covered everything you guys were looking to learn today, anything we could um, do better on, um, constructive criticism, and making sure that you guys got what you wanted out of this hour lunch and learn. Okay, we will give everybody just a couple more minutes. Um, if you give me a thumbs up once you've got it done or put in the chat box, then we know we can um, wrap up the last few slides here. All right. As you guys are finishing up, we will open up um, if anyone else has any more questions or comments. I know we stopped um, throughout the presentation and answered some questions, but now that we are wrapping up, if anything else has came to mind that you would like answered um, or clarified, now would be a great time to ask um, if you have any comments or anything else to share. You are welcome to either put in the chat box and we will read aloud or you can unmute yourself and ask or share, okay? I'm gonna take it as no questions or comments means we hopefully covered a lot of the bases today that you guys were expecting out of the training. Um, I would like to give an up upcoming training alert. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, if you have put your email, we are able to send out um, the training flyer so that you guys don't miss any upcoming our next one on the calendar that you don't want to miss is how to talk to youth. That's going to be presented by my coworker, Kathy, on September 26th from 6.30 to 7.30. Um, you can join this one live um, at the Crestwood High School Library, or there is still the chance to be via Zoom. And below is the pre-register link and um, the Zoom link for that training. I will also include this um, pre-registration and Zoom link in the email that goes out with the presentation and the video. And then I would just like to give a thank you. I know Kathy's not on today, um, but she is our other mentoring coordinator and she's based out of Decorah. She is Howard Almakey and Winnesheek. I'm here in Delaware County. And we just want to say thank you for joining um, today for the vaping training and hope to see many of your faces um, for some upcoming trainings. And if you have any questions, um, both of our emails and phone numbers to reach us. If you are thinking about joining mentoring or would like us to host a Your Life Iowa training or just have any feedback for us. But thank you all for taking time out of your day. And I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about vaping.